Hi everyone, it's Easy again at Manjai Feel Good for Life program. Um, yes, today's video will be about foods and it will be also about the human body, how the human body works. Very simple, uh, clear explanation and also talking about our digestive system that is actually the one integrating the food into our body okay so um, let's roll it um, the digestive system is a very big part of our body and the operation of our body and mostly because all the foods all our intake uh, is basically done via this system. So the, the, the way that foods are going into our body, integrating into our body, being utilized into our body, uh, all begins in the digestive system. So let's look at our digestive system for a moment and just understanding how the process works when we are eating. Okay. Our digestive system starts in the mouth, where the food goes in, and it finishes in our behind, where the poo is coming out. So, when foods are coming into the body, the moment that foods come into the mouth, there's a few actions happening there. First of all, our saliva starts to break down the food and prepare it for arriving to the stomach. That's why it's important to eat slow and chew good. The more you chew, the more saliva you put into the foods, the, more, the easier it is later on to break it down. But also a message is being sent to the body, which foods are coming in, whether it's proteins, carbohydrates, fats, so the stomach can get the right acids ready to break down the foods. The foods go into the, the stomach. Many people think that the stomach is where the digestion uh, is been happening. That's not true. We can actually look at the stomach uh, merely as a blender. A blender that breaks down the food and prepares it for the next steps of the digestive system. So the way that our stomach is working is via acids and via contracting the muscles of the stomach. Um, after the food has been blended, basically, and I'm saying it in a very clear way, just so it's very clear to everyone, the food is being transferred into the small intestine. Small intestine is actually where the food penetrates into the bloodstream and carried onwards for our ingestion. All the foods that the body can utilize is going to the small intestine. From the small intestine, everything that we can utilize and the body needs to get out is being moved to the bowel, the, the large intestine which is essentially like the garbage truck of the human body, getting ready to rid off all those things outside. So we stop for a moment in the small intestine. The small intestine puts all the nutrients, the ingredients of the nutrients into the bloodstream and carried via the blood. Where are we being carried to? Uh, the answer for that is basically for the small cells. So our body is built all from cells. Uh, we have blood cells, skin cells, muscle cells, uh, white cells, red cells, bone cells. Everything is cells in the human body. And every small cell like that have a very delicate chemical balance. Okay, Every little cell like that needs to have oxygen, it needs to have water and it needs to have nutrients. Nutrients coming from food. Those nutrients are basically 
can be broken down to vitamins, minerals and enzymes. So the nutrients goes into the small cell, the water goes into the small cell, the oxygen goes into the small cell, then the cell is doing its chemical reactions, utilizing whatever it needs to, and whatever, obviously from these chemical reactions they are waste matter that the cell secretes back into the bloodstream in order to move them back out to be secreted out from the body. Okay, so it's important to remember the cell, the nutrients that the cell needs, vitamins, minerals and enzymes, and the fact that real ingestion of the nutrients is happening on a cellular level, and at the same time that everything that we don't need is going to be put out from the body either via sweating, which is one of the toxin elimination centers, via the breath, via the pee system and the kidneys, and via the large intestine, the bowel and the poo. Okay, so this ingestion and extracting all the toxins that the body doesn't need, those are two very important fundamentals of our um, digestive system and therefore also on other systems uh, in the human body. So we need to have the understanding that the, the gut or the, the digestive system that we call the gut as a one name for the whole system obviously have a lot of other organs like the liver, the pancreas, the gallbladder uh, that are helping in, in, in all this process but I'm trying to keep it really simple so you can have a good understanding. If you look at our digestive system you can see very clearly that it's very, 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 very long. Actually, normally three times higher, longer than our height. So if a person is one meter, 50 centimeters, his digestion will be somewhere around four and a half meters, okay? This digestive system is similar to other animals in nature that eat plants, okay? If you take any predator in nature, they will have a completely different, uh, very different uh, um, digestive system which is very short and very strong and acidic. Okay, so when a predator is eating meat, it basically, also you can see their teeth is very different. Teeth of predators are just made to cut the meat and swallow it as it is. And the, their digestive system is so strong to break down the meat and, and eliminate it very quickly. So we need to chew the food. We have a different two teeth system, a different digestive system than predators. That's why in general, humans should not eat uh, uh, meat. And we also have this uh, myth around us from a story that has been around for many, many years is that we need proteins in order, proteins, uh, that we definitely need proteins, but we don't need proteins from uh, live, from animals, okay? Uh, they have a lot of bacteria, they create a lot of uh, uh, problems in our artery system, uh, creating plaque and, and, and hardening of our vascular system. Okay, so we established that and explained a little bit how the uh, um, um, digestive system is working. Only one thing that I will mention here is that when we made the separation between the small intestine and the bowel, everything goes to the bowel, has to be eliminated from the body. And the faster it's eliminated, the healthier we are. The longer we hold these toxins into our body, the more chance for them to get putrefied and, 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 and being absorbed back into the body, creating a very toxic body. So the idea is the transition time for our bowel movement. The faster it is, the better it is. We are cleaning up toxins. So um, now, understanding that we can really understand that the types of food that we are eating can also affect a lot of other systems in the body 
including the elimination system that will slow down the more we eat, uh, let's say, bad foods. So before we go to talk about foods, I just want to mention a couple of uh, things because as we explained, uh, the gut is the center of the body. Some of call it even the second brain because a lot of actions happening in the gut is influencing messages sent to the brain uh, to do some actions. So the gut will have an effect on the brain to sooner or later. So humans suffer from three major problems in their gut. And all of those problems originates in the type of food that we eat. Okay. Most disease or dis-ease that people are feeling in their lives is coming from eating not properly, eating not the right foods, not having enough nutrients and having too much garbage, too much toxins, too many toxins. And via that, our system starts to slow down. The first system that will slow down is the immune system. Basically, 80% of the immune system lives in the gut. If our gut is unbalanced and clogged, dirty, our immune system will go down. Second system that goes down is uh, the lymphatic system. And later on, other system, the blood system, the nervous system will be affected as well. So we have three problems basically for humans when it's coming to the gut that we have to pay attention to. I will show you. The first one is inflammation. Okay. When we are eating bad foods, we are going to get inflamed. This inflammation can all be, be cleared in the body by natural cleansing of the body. That means if you eat bad food and go to the gym, you can train for 20 hours, this inflammation will not go. Actually, it might have the opposite effect, which I will explain in a minute. So, the foods that are creating inflammation for us are refined sugar, wheat products, and milk products. Any one of those three, refined sugars, wheat products, and milk products, each one of those, when coming into our gut, will create inflammation. If two or three out of them come together into the gut, that will be a catastrophe for the gut. A lot of struggle over there. So, just to give you an example, refined sugar, okay, which is basically, it's a toxic. White sugar, refined sugar is a toxic and should not be consumed by humans at all. Unfortunately, the way that our society have evolved in the last 50 years, you can see we are all consuming a lot of sugar. If you go to the supermarket, 80% of the products in the supermarket have sugar in them, uh, visible or hidden, okay? So refined sugar is very bad for us and it's actually a toxic. Then we have wheat. Wheat by itself, the wheat product is creating inflammation for us. Okay? And it's not like it's brown wheat and one wheat and bread, white bread or brown bread. The color doesn't matter. If there is wheat inside, it will create inflammation for us. And uh, basically, you know, a lot of people talking about uh, gluten, gluten, gluten free and stuff like that. So just to show you the comparison, 5% of the population are intolerant for gluten. But 95% of the people are intolerant for wheat. It's just that nobody has ever told us. And a lot of people, because of that, are living in this low-grade inflammation that they, they don't even know how the body can feel without it. So, the last one is milk products. All the milk products 
uh, are basically creating inflammation when coming inside our digestive system. So I'll give you an inflammation, uh, I want to give you an example. For example, for wheat, okay? Let's take bread. And bread that is not made from wheat is really good. Any bread made from wheat, it doesn't matter what color it is, if there is wheat inside, is detrimental for our digestive system. So when you eat bread, your body will go into, your gut will go into an inflammation state. For the body to clear out this inflammation, it needs 24 to 36 hours. It will do it by itself. By the way, if you want to help the body, you drink a lot of water. Water really helps to clear out the inflammation. So now, this inflammation is there for 24, 36 hours, and then the body will clear it. However, if we eat bread, Within those 40, uh, 24 to 36 hours, we're going to be inflamed for another 24, 36 hours, and another, and another, and that's basically how most of the diseases are being um, developed by a low, very light inflammation that we don't really feel it at the moment. Uh, unless our body is very clean and we can really feel and reconnect with our body. Most people can't feel when they're having inflammation uh, unless the inflammation has been taken out and then wow, everybody feels so amazing and they don't understand what the magic is. Yes, when the body doesn't have this low grade inflammation in the gut, it feels really, really good. So th this is really important to remember just as general guidelines Refined sugar, wheat, and milk products are to be avoided as much as possible. Um, another thing that I'd like to, to explain, because a lot of people have this experience when they're trying to diet or they're trying to eat healthier and everything, I'd like to, to, to explain uh, the, the difference between um, high glycemic food and low glycemic food, okay? You have high glycemic food and low glycemic food. That actually means what is the effect on the food on the blood sugar. So for example, when we are eating high glycemic food, which is what we call complex carbohydrates, okay? Pastas, bread, potatoes, noodles, uh, things like that. Uh, Let's say that we are here in this point and we eat high glycemic food like pasta or bread. Our blood sugar will rise up immediately very, very high, making us feel very good. But two hours later, it's going to drop down to here to the same point as it was before. At that point, we feel very low energy, out of energy and with very strong cravings that we need to eat something to get back up and then we eat it again and then we climb up again feeling very good and then two or three hours later dropping low again that actually means that the blood sugars has a very a lot of highs and lows highs and lows with this type of food which is actually creating us the situation that we don't want to have it's almost as if you are you have craze of some sort of a very high and lows and unstable condition. Low glycemic food, for example, like vegetables and some fruits, um, the, the way the sugar looks in the blood is very, very gentle, like a wave. It's going up and down, but you're in a very, very, very gentle, balanced way. And basically, in, in, when you're eating low glycemic food, you uh, have a situation that the blood is balanced, the sugar is balanced in the blood, and, and therefore uh, there is not a very big difference between the highs and the lows, which means you don't have a situation that you are craving for, for the foods. So anytime we're eating high glycemic foods, and anybody who ever tried to do a diet or something like this, you know it. If you eat carbohydrates the first thing in the morning, 
boom it gets your energy up but two two three hours later you're gonna feel like oh i must have this food again so eating things from with a low glycemic food uh, much better than having high glycemic food it balances the blood sugar and this is a very important thing for the whole metabolism the blood sugar um, okay well lastly we will talk about the third problem that we have uh, we, we can have in the gut we went through inflammation and so what's the reason that we get inflamed we talked about acidity you have to do a little bit of research um, even though inside the course we have a list of acidifying foods and uh, alkaline foods and we need to try to get ourselves away from a very high acidic environment this environment is uh, very good for disease to 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 be formed and grow um, so the last one today is microbiome so you know our gut is a full living organisms we have trillions of viruses and bacteria and fungal and other things we have good bacteria and bad bacteria and basically the balance of good bacteria and bad bacteria in the gut is very important if we eat a lot of uh, i would say um, processed foods uh, including sugars and wheat and, and and milk products which are processed um, we come to a situation that the bad bacteria which is thriving on those foods are eating and therefore growing and growing and growing and at the end there will be an unbalanced situation where the bad bacteria is really up uh, in, in, in our gut and the good bacteria is actually very very low. Uh, so having a good balanced bacteria is very important. Again, it's influenced by the food that we eat. So we come to the bottom line at the end of the day. When we need to recommend for people what to eat, we want to do that on a very general note. We don't want people to tell people you eat that and that and that specifically because you then you lose your own journey you must do your own research you must look you must find out according to the guidelines that we are giving you it's part of the process of you growing up as a human being understanding which foods are good for you which goods are foods are not good for you you also can divide the foods for two groups food that give you energy and foods that take your energy away. It's very easy, this is very easy to find out how, because when you finish a meal, you say, okay, how do I feel? <coughs> Am I energized? Do I feel good? Or I just want to go to sleep? If you just want to fall asleep and go to sleep, that means the foods that you were eating were too heavy for you, and they take away your energy. After a meal, you should feel really light and, and rejuvenated and, and energetic. Anything but that, any tiredness and, 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 and uh, desire to sleep or rest or something, <coughs> basically means that we, you ate too many foods that take away your energy. So, in a nutshell, in general, very important to understand that we are bound to the laws of nature. The laws of nature, unfortunately, are above the laws of government and stuff like that. We need to realize that the universe has its own thing. For example, one of the laws of universe says that the sun is the only source of energy on this planet. And how does the sun transmit all the energy to all the other things, living things on the planet? Yes, via the plant kingdom. So the more we eat things from the plant kingdom, fruits, vegetables, plants, flowers, uh, nuts, uh, everything that grows, everything that nature grows, will actually create a situation that we consume the energy that the sun is giving the plant kingdom with a very simple process that we all learned in elementary school called uh, the photosynthesis, therefore creating the chlorophyll and the energy that we need. So in a nutshell, maybe 
the best thing to do is try to separate the foods for two groups. One group is everything that is natural and be, is being grown for us by the universe. The other group is um, basically um, not refined but uh, processed foods made by companies in the lab. Okay, remember again, natural foods given by the universe, processed foods given to us by companies who want to make money. They save and they put things, they can preserve this food for two years on the shelves in the supermarket. It's not good for us. So in general, the more we eat from the plant kingdom, the healthier we are. Real, real vitamins, minerals and enzymes are only in the group here which are coming from nature okay vitamins made in the lab will never have the same minerals are the same so this is the first thing to remember the more we eat unprocessed live foods given to us by nature the more we will thrive the more our body can rejuvenate itself and, and can handle all the tasks that we need to. The more processed food we eat, the more inflammation we'll get, the more acidity we'll get, the more microbiome balance will get out of balance. So this is the general thing that we should remember. And uh, you know, when you're eating fruits and vegetables uh, or anything else from the plant kingdom, if it's cooked, it's not bad for us, but it doesn't have all the right ingredients that we need. Remember, the four more important things in nutrition is vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and fiber. All those four are only present for us in the best form possible via things from the plant kingdom. So if we keep that in mind, we can keep 70%, 80% of our food healthy and the other of course the healthier you want to be the more you have to stay away from the processed foods uh, what um, you know in our society we also have a tendency to label junk food okay and uh, okay if somebody is asking you oh is a burger junk food of course you will say yes absolutely junk food burger french fries you know it's we have the association with junk food, but at the same time, if somebody will ask you, well, in a two-star Michelin restaurant, you can have a beautiful steak with mashed potatoes, truffle mashed potatoes, and a glass of wine and everything, you need to realize it's as junk as the burger. There is no difference. It's just packaged differently, it's looking differently, but it's the same thing. So for us to eat healthy, we need to stick with nature and we need to stick with things that are alive. It doesn't mean you can't eat soups. You can eat soups, they are not bad for you. Maybe as a beginning part of the diet, you can have a soup every time before you have a salad. You'll get full quicker if you're really, really hungry. But very important is to have fresh fruits, vegetables from the plant kingdom, raw, fresh, live, foods so this is all for today i hope you got the, the general picture we will also do one video just for foods and you know what is recommended and stuff stuff like that but remember it is your own duty it is your own responsibility to take care of your health therefore it's your responsibility to search not only with knowledge also with feeling after you eat something how do you feel do you really feel good after you eat something or you feel like you just want to go to sleep and finish the day pay attention also that dinner mostly is the heaviest meal for all of us and that's also something we need to think about dinner should be the lightest meal from all the meals because we are finishing the day and we are about to go to sleep um, but you know, the way that things go in our society, the free time that we have is mostly in the evening, and then we get bored and we're eating and social eating and stuff like that. So 
This is an important note to keep in our mind. Dinner should be the lightest meal in the daytime. If you want to eat more, you eat more in the morning or at noon time when you still have seven or eight hours of uh, using the energy that they utilize those foods. So I hope this makes sense. I hope you understand a little bit more about our body and how the systems are working, especially our digestive system. And connected with that is the elimination system, which is very important for us. And uh, you also can understand the connection between food. So we can actually manage our gut by the foods that we are eating. That's why it's so important to eat healthy. So thank you for, for, for your time and patience. And I hope that, that things are starting to fall into pieces for you in your head and uh, to, to help you to carry yourself to a better place than you are today. Have a nice day. Thank you.